since we're talking about blood, let's talk about the Red Cross. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, hi. And, and Fairfax, who loves to talk about the Red yes, Cross. Yes, it's our semi-domesticated animal. Indeed. Uh, okay. Where do I even start here? The Red Cross. Sorry, I got to um, figure out what I'm doing here. Okay. Um, I will link to the page, but I'm just going to show you a series of screenshots. Um, yeah, with with regard to uh, things that are coming up on the Red Cross site at the moment. Um, they have LGBTQ plus donors. This page is supported by the American Red Cross LGBTQ plus team member resource group. Learn about federal regulations related to blood donation by lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, intersex, asexual, and gender nonconforming individuals. American Red Cross values. Uh, if anyone watching doesn't know what the American Red Cross is, which I find dubious, uh, there are a lot of things. But in the United States, anyway, the primary way that Americans end up running into them is with blood drives. Uh, they are, I think, by far the largest uh, collector of blood, often encouraging people to donate blood. Uh, and actually just, yeah, now you can leave my screen up. Uh, and, uh, and therefore distributor of blood. And of course, back in the 80s, uh, when uh, I, I think most of these most of these sort of corrections to who could donate when were happening in the eighties with the AIDS pandemic, pandemic epidemic epidemic maybe I don't know when AIDS came on the scene and had everyone terrified and then you know in short order people were beginning to get sort of a handle on well who's really at risk. Uh, there were of course restrictions put in place in terms of who could donate blood. And one of those restrictions was men who have sex with men, which we'll see this here in a minute, MSM is the acronym, not an acronym, the abbreviation they're using. Men who have sex with men uh, and have had sex with men within the last three months are not allowed to donate, are on a, a temporary hold. And if you are a man who has sex with men but hasn't had sex with any men in the previous three months, then you're allowed to donate. Uh, because because uh, many sexually uh, transmitted uh, diseases um, stay in the blood and um, are particularly suited to transmission uh, through uh, male homosexual sex. Okay, so American Red Cross values, such as the background. Our top priority, they say, is the safety of our volunteer blood donors and the patients in need of life-saving blood products. Our employees and volunteers are trained to be sensitive to the needs of all potential blood donors. The American Red Cross believes blood donation eligibility should not be determined by methods that are based upon sexual orientation. We are com committed to working with partners towards achieving this goal. We understand that there is a difference between biological sex and gender. No, they don't. <laughs> the Food and Drug Administration guidance revised recommendations for reducing the risk of human immunodeficiency virus transmission by blood and blood products states, quote, in the context of the donor history questionnaire, FDA recommends that male or female gender be taken to be self-identified and self-reported. In a linked document in which they're talking about what the rules are supposed to be, they're suggesting, and, and everyone who's collecting blood, I think it's in the US, has this is from the FDA, has to abide by these guidelines, uh, that blood don donors must defer for three months for the most recent sexual contact, a man who has had sex with another man during the past three months, and uh, a woman who must defer for three months from the most recent sexual contact, a female who has had sex during the past three months with a man who has had sex with another man in the past three months. So those are the guidelines, supposedly as they stand. And yet, back on the Red Cross's site, under men who have sex with men, they say, again, the FDA guidance, what I just read, defer for three months from the most recent sexual contact, a man who has had sex with another man during the past three months, all U.S. blood collection organizations must follow this federal requirement. But the Red Cross continues. The Red Cross recognizes the hurt this policy has caused to many in the LGBTQ plus community and believes blood donation eligibility should not be determined by methods that are based upon sexual orientation. We are committed to working with partners towards achieving this goal. And when you go into their frequently asked questions, I'm a trans woman and I have not been eligible to donate because my assigned sex at birth was male and I had sex with a man. Can I donate blood? Individuals who identify as female and have sex with a man may be eligible to donate blood if all other blood donation eligibility criteria are applicable. 
if an individual is previously deferred from donating blood due to men due to being a man who has sex with men, that person will need to call the donor and client support center, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All you have to do if you are a man who has sex with men and has been actively having sex with men, if you want to donate blood and thus potentially corrupt the blood supply, is walk in, and as long as you have not tried this before and admitted that you're actually a man and said, nope, I'm a woman, and they will let you donate blood. So it's the, it's the ultimate proof that this entire societal disorder, whatever it is, amounts to the prioritization of the perceptual world over reality. And not, yes, so that's the postmodern part, right? And then it's a prioritization of the perceptual world of mentally ill people, right? Like, it's one thing to have gender dysphoria and feel like I really, in order to feel my most true self, I need to present as the sex that I am not. It is quite another thing to say, nope, I'm a dude, not. I never felt like it either, but like it's 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 a different it's it's that is a mental disorder. Furthermore, if you go in to the Red Cross knowing what everyone knows about the ways that things like monkeypox are transmitted, and you say, "Yep, I'm a woman. Yep, I've had sex with men, and yes, I was assigned male at birth, but I'm actually a woman today," and you donate blood knowing that, you're a psychopath. Well, I, I, I won't say that. I, I, I don't know. People are confused in a lot of different ways. People take advantage of these confusions in other ways. But I will say um, the problem is that this actually, in the same era that we have been told what we absolutely must do, for example, take an experimental gene therapy in order to protect vulnerable people, even if we ourselves do not believe ourselves to be vulnerable to COVID based on well-understood patterns of transmission. Oh, and by the way, it doesn't protect vulnerable people. Right, it doesn't. But mm -hmm. the point is, you know, at best, they thought it did. And if they did think it did, and that's what was supposed to have morally required us, because protecting other people was the motivating factor. Mm -hmm. Why is protecting other people not the motivating factor here? And the answer is, look, if you are a biological male and you have had sex with other men, you can't donate blood, right? <laughs> not for a period of three months, yeah. right? That's simple. Mm -hmm. Nobody's asking you to out yourself. The point is, here's the guideline. Mm -hmm. Don't don donate blood if you don't qualify. Here's how you'll know. And the point is, in order but to- it's caused hurt. In order to humor this alternative perspective, and I'm not arguing that there is not a uh, a gentleman's agreement level of decency if somebody is trend has transitioned and they wish to be you know called female, fine. But the point is that this does not change things when you get to the doctor's office. It does not change things when you go to donate blood. There's a physical reality, and that's not about courtesy. Right. That's about that's about other things. In this case, it's about the transmission of a communicable disease. Yep. It sure is. And uh, here, this felt a little bit related. Uh, don't put it up yet, Zach. Uh, people will probably remember Dylan Mulvaney, the um, the very talented young man who less than a year ago decided uh, the transitioning publicly on TikTok uh, was actually going to be um, the way to acquire the fame uh, that he had clearly so long desired, and um, and now has you know days of girlhood, and um, it, it, it's it's quite something, it's quite something, and has recently undergone facial feminization surgery and has not yet revealed the new feminized face to the world, um, but. Here is the top of a TikTok post for the new year, uh, you may show it, in which Dylan Mulvaney says, a friendly reminder as we start the new year, not all trans people desire affirming surgeries or hormones, they are still trans. But when we do, it's a necessity and a win. Please show up for all trans people the way you have showed up for me. Happy new year and love ya. You can't 
have it all the ways. It is an opt-in, get out of jail free as many times as you want. It's even better than Monopoly's get out of jail free card because you don't have to turn it in once you use it. All you have to do is say, nope, not the sex I actually am, and all the doors open, including the ability to pollute the blood supply, apparently. Why would we open that door for people? Why would we do that? Yeah, and, and just the maddening inconsistency uh, of it. Yeah. I mean, really, I, I, I'm having a hard time getting over a society that, you know, wants to manipulate us with claims that we have obligations to keep other people safe, which, of course, we do have obligations to keep other people safe. But they often then, as soon as you say, well, yeah, I agree, there's a requirement to keep other people safe, then they smuggle in all this stuff that puts you in tremendous danger for no obvious reason. Well, they also redefine safe, right? Of course. Uh, and violence. And everything. And, and everything. But, you know, safe, safe means feeling safe. Yeah. Right? And that, you know, that's... That's been being done for a long time, actually. Um, are you safe and do you feel safe are two reasonable questions. Do you feel safe and is that the indicator of whether or not you are safe? That is a, a there's a logical problem in that. And some people probably are very, very good having been in lots of different kinds of situations, encountered lots of different kinds of ways that they might actually not be safe, that having those two things, feeling safe and actually being safe, be as tightly coupled as possible, and we should all try for that. But some people seem actually interested in decoupling those things as much as possible and of crying about not being safe, you know, shouting from the rooftops about how at risk they are and how if you don't do what they want, they're going to hurl themselves off the roofs. And... When, in fact, there was no threat, why are we letting them rule? Why are we letting them make the decisions? Yeah, and uh, frankly, it's pretty obvious that this society is not really concerned about safety in any deep way, right? The food right. supply can tell you that. The mm -hmm. quality of the air, you mm -hmm. know, microplastics, all of these things are places where tremendously unsafe stuff has uh, been uh, produced in such a way that it impacts the development yeah. of children and the chemicals in the in the water supply that we're drinking, right? You know, both from pharmaceuticals and from uh, insecticides and so pesticides. I guess what I would say is that every time that same system, which is obviously indifferent to the harm it does to people, right? It's going to shove. Mike Mew out of his profession, uh, rather than address the question of, uh, you know, must we continue to harm children by feeding them stuff that's too soft when they're young, right? It doesn't care about the well-being of kids. Right. Um, so then every time it uses safety mm. as its excuse for taking some new kind of power, I officially don't believe it. Right. Right. If it was really interested in safety, it would be behaving differently. And even if it wasn't very good at protecting us, it would right. at least be consistent in desiring that we do things that are safer. But hell no. I mean, it is, um, you know, it likes to inflict stuff on us and it basically laughs when we, you know, take the bait. Yep. Um, and then it suddenly shouts safety and everybody's supposed to adjust everything about, you know, either you're supposed to throw out the precautionary principle mm -hmm. in the interest of safety. Right? Like, what the hell is that? <laughs> yes. It, 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 well, we're talking safety, not precaution. Precaution is right. a totally oh, different precaution, thing. Precaution, that's dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're putting everyone in danger with all that precaution. Let us do your, think Let us do your thinking for you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, nothing safer than that. Yeah.